Welcome to Healthcare Aptitude, where healthcare's thought leaders will examine ways to address the rising costs of care in America. We'll also examine how the latest advances in mobile apps are helping hospitals and health systems bend the cost curve and improve patient engagement. Welcome to Healthcare Aptitude. I'm your host, Bruce Kennedy, and as the Vice President of Provider Development at MobileSmith, I support the adoption and utilization of our provider and patient application platforms. At MobileSmith, we help our clients meet their healthcare consumers where they are on their mobile devices to extend the reach of providers to modify behavior with apps that remind, educate, track, and engage the patients that use them. Just a quick recap from last month's program, where we focused on Luke Popish from South Shore Health System. Luke was scheduled to be a feature presenter at HIMSS 2020, but with the cancellation of the conference, we'll be shifting his session to a virtual event via webinar. So stay tuned for more details on that. With me today is Carrie Lynn Primer Morris. As the Chief Technology Officer for Healthcare, Carrie Lynn leads a team of digital advisors who help organizations embrace and bring to life digital transformation. Her team's mission is to bring new digital ideas to the table in the quest of solving critical issues to make a true difference for patients, providers, payers, and researchers. Carrie Lynn, which I just found out today, is also an avid runner with a personal interest in using wearables and feedback loops to improve health outcomes. How's it going today, Carrie Lynn? It's going good, Bruce. A little bit stressed with um, everything going on in the uh, in the world right now with the coronavirus, um, and I'm sure we'll probably touch on that later in the conversation. Yeah, these are these are tense times, aren't they, in our in our field? So, Carrie Lynn, Microsoft's approach to the business of healthcare is a bit different than most organizations in our industry. Can you share a little bit about Microsoft's mission in healthcare? Sure, Bruce. You know we are different. And that difference is a big reason as to why I personally decided to come to Microsoft um, a little over a year ago. Um, Our mission statement at Microsoft is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. And it's not just a statement, we really mean it. We look at healthcare as an incredible, um, incredibly personal experience in that we all are patients and we all are caregivers uh, at some point in our lives. And in that journey, uh, we as Microsoft, we want to be the enablers and the helpers. We're not interested in competing in the business of our clients. We're looking to help our clients compete. And so for healthcare, that means that we're not looking to set up our own healthcare clinics. We're not looking to acquire and harvest our clients' data for our own needs. We're interested in helping our clients transform their businesses in this digital age and unlock the secrets in their data to improve the caregiver and the patient experience um, and reduce cost because that that is a that is a big focus. So Microsoft then views itself as the ultimate transformation enabler. You know, we truly do, but we're not looking to be in this journey alone. Um, We really pride ourselves on our partner ecosystem. We have some solutions that are native to Microsoft, but we also work with a vast network of other organizations who build solutions on our technology. And this allows us then to exponentially increase the value that we can bring to the world. You know, we touched on it a bit earlier, so let's jump right into it. Um, clearly, the coronavirus uh, is on everyone's mind right now. My understanding is that that Microsoft is doing a whole lot to be proactive in, in helping their organizations address this outbreak. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, Bruce. You know, coronavirus has really shaken us uh, to the core, especially given the fact that some of the first cases were reported not too far from our headquarters in Washington. Uh, mm. It's a very, just a very scary time for us as uh, as a nation and, and globally. We're really lucky that for many years, um, we've had a Microsoft disaster response team that is sponsored through Microsoft Philanthropies. So they're not new, and it was very fortuitous that they exist. 
Um, we have three critical goals as part of the, the Microsoft Disaster Response Team, and that is to empower first responder organizations to meet critical needs, to empower humanitarian organizations to drive greater impact, um, as well as empower displaced people to rebuild their lives, which isn't quite as applicable in coronavirus that is, as it is in, say, a hurricane scenario. There's also no requirement to be a past or future customer. In fact, no requirement to have any history of Microsoft at all when these organizations are reaching out uh, for, for assistance. And right now we have about 50 missions across the globe related to coronavirus. There's about five different areas that, uh, that these are falling into. Um, one is infrastructure augmentation, which is about uh, either moving critical infrastructure to the cloud or providing um, additional capacity to, to process data in a secure and compliant manner. A second area is in data collection. So that can be assisting with, uh, with say, contact tracing. The workflow improvement is a third area. So, for example, there's a lab that's reached out that's looking for ways to accelerate their testing process. Analytics or informatics, um, so looking for ways to assist in the interpretation of all of the data that's out there. Uh, and then lastly, uh, artificial intelligence. And so a key area of that is trying to monitor uh, social monitoring, sentiment analysis, um, trying to look for fake news so that that can be addressed. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually completely separate from the philanthropy efforts, there's also uh, efforts going on uh, across Microsoft from our Teams group. You know, Teams is a great enabler for work from home or work from remote. And the, thus, uh, our team's practice is making that widely available for free for a short period of time to get us through this. And then from an education perspective, it's, uh, it's one of the education offerings that's available for schools to use. Right. So it's a great thing to have out there when we're looking at the need to, to work from home. Thank you for that, Carolyn. I, I envision that there are probably a number of our listeners that we're not aware of the extent and breadth to which Microsoft was uh, combating or helping uh, organizations um, manage their, their way through this coronavirus crisis. So um, that's good information to share. You know, Microsoft has a number of solutions that span across the healthcare spectrum, uh, from payers to providers to pharma, practically every stakeholder in between. Our audience on this program is probably made up of those, a lot of those folks on the provider side. Can you walk us through what Microsoft means to hospitals and, and healthcare systems? You know, there's three different areas when we think about um, Microsoft in the healthcare space that, uh, that we're focused on. The, the first is looking to enable personalized care. And, you know, that is through the technology that supports patient applications, intelligent bots, telehealth, prescription management. The second is looking at empowering care teams and improving patient outcomes. So here we're looking at care pathways and uh, smart medical devices, care coordination, the experience that the patient has in the hospital, one of my favorites, using artificial intelligence to, to improve care. And then the third area is looking at improving operational outcomes. So this is a, a key focus of the internal processes that can help us reduce cost across a provider. Um, I come from the provider side, so uh, the provider is near and dear to my heart. You know, traditional providers have a hodgepodge of uh, on-premise systems from their EMR to their claims to their patient and employee scheduling to ERPs to finance and HR, medical devices. I mean, all of that, it's a, it's, it has to be one of the most complex technology ecosystems that's out there. And, you know, in the last couple decades, healthcare companies had to evolve to become technology companies. But the ability to focus on emerging technology was generally very limited. I mean, the healthcare organizations found themselves building data centers mm -hmm. to hold their massive amounts of data, um, but had very little time or capacity or tools to effectively connect it all together. And then, you know, for, for a long time, compute power was so expensive that they they might have all this data, but then not be able to harvest it. And so now, you know, enter the advent of cloud technology. And of course, Microsoft is there with um, key cloud providers in this space. And, 
you know, here, the, the goal of all of us is to enable organizations to transform by simultaneously moving to the cloud, as well as developing applications that allow them to access their data. So it's not a sequential process. I think many folks wish it were. I like <laughs> it. <laughs> it's hard, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the I liken it to uh, we're building the airplane at the same time we're flying it. And we're doing that out of necessity, because if we were to say, you know, okay, hold on, folks, let's move everything to the cloud, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do to improve patient outcomes, you're going to be a long ways down the road and too far for the impact that we need to have today. And, and so, um, you know, the, would it help if I give you one of my favorite stories in the space, Bruce? Absolutely. I love your stories, Carrie Lynn. So, um, Oshner Health Systems in Louisiana, um, they, uh, they are, uh, their EMR is epic, um, and we had the privilege of partnering with Oshner in epic um, on helping them uh, reduce codes in the outside of the ICU. And so, um, you know, in, today in the hospital, doctors and nurses they rush into action whenever a patient suffers a cardiac or respiratory arrest and they need immediate help. And Oshner came to us and said, you know, well, what, what if the doctors and the nurses um, would know somehow in the future who is about to code and thus preventing it, prevent it from happening in the first place? Predictive. Uh, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's great because you're, you really are, you're not just improving the care after an event has happened, you're preventing the event itself. Um, and they knew they had the data to do it, but the the human brain just couldn't process everything that was going on um, to, to digest, digest it so that they could respond before the event. So, you know, enter in um, artificial intelligence and machine learning um, using Azure, using the data from Epic, and they were able to uh, create um, an algorithm that predicts patient de deterioration uh, literally hours before an adverse event. So it's it's an early warning system. Um, in the in the first ninety day pilot, they actually reduced codes outside of the ICU by forty four percent, and I don't think anybody involved in that even thought that it would be that dramatic. Um, but that's that's truly amazing to, to be able to do that. You no, know, those are clearly impressive results, especially in, in, in that level of care delivery environment. Can you talk a little bit about the broader transformation that hospital providers are gonna experience over the next few years? So there's a number of things that, that providers need to do from a broader perspective. And there's three primary parts of that, that the first is that, that if they don't have it today, they need to create a digital platform. So what does that mean? You know, they need to consolidate their existing technology and take that and get it into the cloud, you know, preferably Azure. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you know, I do work for Microsoft. I have a preference. I um, so that's the first thing is the, the creation of the digital platform, because you need you need to be able to have a place um, for your data to go in order to harvest it. Um, the second part of that is looking at modernization and the introduction of new services. So um, some of your business applications or some of your providers business applications um, are going to need to be renovated, you know, reevaluate everything from the, the cybersecurity to how you're managing it on an ongoing basis. You're basically looking to develop speed and agility in that in that part. Um, and then the third part is the, the this concept of a developing continuous innovation. And that's to me where all the fun stuff is, but you can't really do that without the first two. Now, presented those in three tiers, almost like it's a sequential activity. And the reality is it's not. It could be. We don't have that leisure at this point to to do that. We've got to be thinking about the innovation at the same time that we're building out our infrastructure. And we need to to get that speed to market. You know, healthcare for a long time has been a much more 
waterfall driven methodology than it has been agile. And we've got to get over that. We've got to move to um, to getting ourselves comfortable with quick deployments, getting things out and used and getting value from our technology in a much quicker way than we ever did in the past. Carolyn, thank you for unpacking that that process and 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 the evolution that hospitals and providers and health systems are going to have to 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 come to grips with and adopt. Mobile Smith's Perry product is a perioperative app that improves patient adherence by integrating with a hospital's EMR. Can you talk a bit about Microsoft's role in the EMR lifecycle? I I know that Microsoft has a particularly strong partnership with Epic for this very reason. We do have a, a strong partnership with Epic, um, but we also we work with with all of the EMRs that are out there. So, you know, Epic, Cerner, Allscripts, Meditech, the you name it, we'll be working with them. The EMR is such a primary data source, and we're always looking to help clients get the value out of that data. Providers have spent literally billions of dollars on their EMRs. And the promise of the EMR has been, I'll say, met lukewarm at best. It serves us well as a electronic filing cabinet, but it has not served us well from the perspective of the caregiver. And it has introduced a lot of frustration. Some providers would even say that it it has introduced distraction in patient care. And so we look at that, we look at that as an opportunity to improve the way that healthcare is addressed today. And when I say that, we're basically looking to use the EMR data, ingest it into the cloud, if it's not already in the cloud, where we can do more with it. So there's a number of things, but we we want to use AI on it. We also want to be able to put functions around the EMR. So, you know, just as MobileSmith uh, does with Perry, looking to enhance the patient and the caregiver experience by expanding functions um, such as patient adherence or making it easier to interact with the EMR. Mm -hmm. Um, So one thing that Microsoft is doing in that interaction space, we have a partnership with Nuance with respect to ambient listening. And Nuance has released a product that uh, assists caregivers, you know, while they're with patients, that helps them with documentation. So it's ambient listening in the background, uses natural language processing, to take the information and translate that into the patient notes with the idea being that as this as this application you know learns and continues to get smarter that the amount of time that the caregiver spends on documentation will be greatly reduced. And that's just one of many. So the EMR is going to continue, in my opinion, to be a a very central point. We're looking again to put the tools around it, just as MobileSmith is, to better enable organizations. Ambient listening is 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 exciting technology. And um, I know that that you know there's been a lot of, of resource and investment by Microsoft and Azure. Um, in connecting other sectors of, of healthcare. Can you talk a little bit about what Microsoft is doing in, in IoT, the Internet of Things? Oh, this is an exciting space. Um, be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's one I, I have a lot of, of personal interest in this space. I have worn a, you know, a tracking device for running for, for many, many years. Um, I started with the Nike Fuel Band, and I was so mad at Nike when they discontinued that. But, uh, you know, the the data, while it was available to me, it didn't really go anywhere. From a, a technology perspective with IoT, you know, th- this is very big for us. IoT devices, you know, this is high frequency, high volume data. The developers that deal with it, they have to deal with a range of devices and schemas, they, they, sensors worn on the body, ambient data capture, you know, the it's it's everywhere. And so the goal is to leverage machine learning and analytics to deliver, you know, to, to deliver that patient visibility. And doing that, though, the, the two consistent things that, that we know that are difficult are 
the interoperability, which we hear always so much about, and the security. And so Microsoft made a commitment a while back to develop fire tools for developers to securely ingest, um, normalize, and persist PHI data specifically from IoT devices. So the that's actually available in GitHub. It's pretty cool that it's out there. You know, it it's definitely going to allow us to transform this space. We, we've talked a, a, quite a bit about the level of visibility and security that's required within the healthcare space. Our company, MobileSmith, is really working on procedural transparency in a way to empower patients. I know that's one of your goals as well. Can you talk a little bit about your focus on the consumer side of the equation when it comes to healthcare? You know, everything that we do nowadays is really, we try to base it all on personas. And so that includes, you know, what is the, what's the viewpoint and the experience of the patient? What's the viewpoint and the experience of the, of the caregiver? What does this look like from an operational viewpoint? And so by trying to, to take the same challenge and look at it through these different lenses. The intent is to expose all of those things that would give one group or the other angst and deal with it directly in a transparent manner, um, as well as in a in a compliant manner. So it's not it's not like it's a separate. Um, it's not an afterthought. It's not you know we're not looking to develop something and and then you know apply this afterwards and say oh did you think about X Y Z after the fact, the the design methodology is to is to look at that up front. The same is true when we think about inclusiveness. So it's a goal of Microsoft's to be the most inclusive organization. And so when we're looking at inclusiveness, we're doing that, we're doing that up front and we're doing everything we can to avoid bias, um, especially in artificial intelligence. And it's so easy for bias to get into it, but we're trying our best to really put those ideas up front because we feel that if you can focus on them up front and it's it's always something that is top of mind, then you're more likely to get it right the first time. We've talked about a wide range of of, of areas that Microsoft is is has evolved into and and is working on. What are some of the other priorities for Microsoft that we may not have touched on? You know, there's two. One uh, is the Microsoft Healthcare Bot, um, and the second is the HoloLens. Um, so the Healthcare Bot um, is uh, is a um, is pretty cool. You can ask it questions, and it can help guide you to the right diagnosis or the right next steps. So should I go to the doctor? Should I not? Um, the we actually have a template out there. Um, specific uh, for COVID-19. So it's something that that uh, that is available um, to take a look at. Um, and the Providence Hospital is uh, is using it today uh, to help to help guide patients in in their journey in this um, in this time of crisis. Um, the second, the HoloLens. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Um, the HoloLens is in augmented reality glasses and has incredible capabilities in eye tracking. And so we're hoping to capitalize on, on those capabilities in several different areas. The, if you think about this, the HoloLens is like having an entire, it's like being there. It's, it's the, from a surgery perspective, one of the things that we're looking at doing is using the HoloLens to help in in guided surgery. Again, this is not this isn't out there yet, but it's a uh, it's a use case. Um, so the ability to to use the HoloLens to look at margins of a tumor um, and thus have uh, a better outcome um, for for digital surgery. Um, is has tremendous promise. Um, you know, it'll take us a while to get there, um, but really great use case. Another great use case is in regards to if you have, um, if you're one place and you have someone somewhere else um, that doesn't say have the expertise, um, but you have the HoloLens, 
then your ability to guide that individual through a procedure um, is entirely possible because you can, you know, it's, it's truly like being there. And the, that promise when it comes to say surgery in remote locations where you might have, um, you might have someone who's capable of doing a procedure, um, but is not, um, but is not knowledgeable, um, in that if you can have kind of that angel on their shoulder that is, that is, seeing what they're seeing when they're seeing it um, and being able to help them through um, the process, it can literally save lives. So that's, uh, those are both really exciting. That, that is exciting, uh, Carrie Lynn. Thank you for, for sharing the, the, the range of, of work um, that uh, Microsoft is doing in the healthcare space. I think that it will be extremely informative to um, a, a large segment of our, of our listeners. Carrie Lynn Primer-Morris, thank you for spending time with us today. And uh, to our audience, we'd love to hear your feedback on the show. Um, so folks, that's a wrap on another episode of Healthcare Aptitude. Remember to catch the show on Healthcare Now Radio every weekday at 7 a.m. Uh, at 3 p.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern time. For more information, visit www.mobilesmith.com and send your questions to marketing at mobilesmith.com. Welcome to Healthcare Aptitude, where healthcare's thought leaders will examine ways to address the rising costs of care in America. We'll also examine how the latest advances in mobile apps are helping hospitals and health systems bend the cost curve and improve patient engagement. <laughs>